Last week, the BBC released the results of its loneliness experiment research. A third of people who completed the survey said that they were often or very often lonely. I was appointed to this role in response to the findings and recommendations of the Joe Cox Loneliness Commission. Now, Joe was a brilliant woman and the honesty with which she discussed her personal struggle with loneliness was very brave. When Jo was at university, she would write to her sister Kim about missing the safety and comfort of family and friends. And later, when Jo had her children, she felt the loneliness of being a young mum at home alone. We may not know it, but all of us will know someone who feels alone in our rapidly changing world. There is a common misconception that this is only an issue which is particularly common in later life. But as Jo said, loneliness can affect anyone at any time. And that is why the government's work is looking at loneliness across all age groups. This government recognises that loneliness is one of the most important public health challenges that we face on a par with smoking or obesity. But it's also linked to an increased risk of coronary heart disease, depression, cognitive de decline and Alzheimer's disease. It's bad for our communities too, because if we're not spending time with each other, then we are not understanding one another. And Joe's message was that we all have the power to know our neighbours and by doing so, improve our communities. However, loneliness is not an issue that government can tackle alone. It is a problem that all of us in society must tackle together. So the government work is designed to complement and support the good work already being led by communities, charities, businesses, health professionals and individuals. The Be More Us campaign from the Campaign to End Loneliness does a great job of inspiring people to reach out and make a difference to those they come across in their everyday lives. After all, government can't make our friends for us. But government does have a role in creating the conditions to enable individuals, communities, local authorities, business, businesses and the health and the voluntary sectors to support people's social well-being and relationships. Now, we will shortly be publishing the first government strategy for tackling loneliness in England. The strategy will set out government action in three key areas. First, where government policies and activities can directly support people to avoid loneliness and to build social connections. And the cross-government strategy is supported by £20.5 million of extra grant funding announced earlier this year. A second the strategy covers how government can work with partners to improve the evidence on what works in tackling loneliness so we can all focus our efforts where they will have the most impact. The Office for National Statistics has been working with academics, frontline practitioners and other experts to come up with one consistent way to measure loneliness that we can all use. And we're also working uh, with the What Works Centre for Wellbeing to carry out a rapid review of interventions that tackle loneliness so that we all better understand what approaches are most effective. And third, the strategy considers how government can contribute to the national conversation. We need to talk more about the issue to raise awareness and reduce stigma. We are with loneliness now where we were with mental health a decade ago. Our partners at the Campaign to End Loneliness, the Loneliness Action Group and the Joe Cox Foundation are doing some incredible work around raising awareness of loneliness and we hope that the government's work will amplify this further. To get there requires society-wide change. It will take time. It's a multi-generational challenge. And I thank you for all you do from the bottom of my heart and I look forward to working with you to make that change. Thank you.